Hey Spurs fans, Paul the Hotspur Hippie here, the only psychedelic soccer show on the internet. And this is what you wanted to see, wasn't it? Stuff like that and the bridge. It's a bit hazy because they're doing some uh, controlled bushfire burning. There's a load of building work, so I'm going to pop off somewhere else. See you in a second. It's a bit quieter here. Nice bit of water. Still a bit hazy. <clears throat> Excuse me while I take a sit down. Of course someone's got a leaf blower going on, but you can't have it all, can you? Anyway, a few things to get through today. <clears throat> Ange, uh, Ange Postacoglu was on uh, Talk Sport last night. Really uh, interesting interview with Simon Jordan and uh, Jim White. And uh, some good quotes, some good quotes. And uh, I listened to it. I, I also contacted TalkSport because I thought it, it was like a, Ange was going to be in the studio for about three hours. Um, and uh, I thought it was a call-in. So I was saying, can I, can I call Ange? Can I? No, no, no. Oh, well, there we go. <clears throat> so a couple of things leapt out. Um, I've let I've let the interview percolate around my head. I watched it a couple of times. The way I watched it was, I was watching Steve um, Perryman's new podcast, which I'll, I'll get on to in a second. And uh, then it was Ange time because it was live, so I paused. Mr. Perryman went over to Ange, got a good fill of that, and then carried on with Steve Perryman. So I, I felt I felt very full of uh, Tottenham Hotspur, the greatest football team the world has ever seen. Goodness, uh, like yesterday yesterday night. Um, they were obviously trying to press him on his, uh, you know, relationship with Daniel Levy, probably Simon Jordan more than than Jim White, and um, Ange wasn't really having it. Um, in a, you know, in a nice way, of course. He's, you know, he's taking full responsibility. I, I, I'm responsible whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. I'm responsible. So, you know, we're not going to hear him say, "Ah, these players, this club is unacceptable." None of that. Not from Ange, man. But there was a couple of things about winning and success I, I really did enjoy. Success is about winning things, but it's not about... It, success is about... It, success is winning, but it's not a desperation about winning something. I really like that one. Because he was asked about the League Cup and, uh, you know, fans were annoyed. And, and I love it when Ange says, I'm never going to tell the fans how they should feel. And he said he was disappointed himself. Just on the fans. You know... Everyone, when they talk about Tottenham, they always say, oh, great training facilities and uh, great uh, tra uh, great uh, stadium. Ange says that, but he adds a third one in every time. Great training facilities, great ground, great fans and support. Just a little, a little, a little difference, but it humanises the whole thing. So he's asked about the, um, the League Cup and um, he said... You know, it, it's it, it's not about just winning something for the sake of it. There's no point in, in winning a Carabao Cup and finishing 10th in the league. He wants to build something that's maintained success. So he said that, so you win some, you win things every year. That's, that's music to my ear. Um, and when he was asked about, you know, winning in general, this uh, pricked up my ears. And... Uh, I saw on a stream last night, oh, good old Coover picked up on this one as well. Ange said, um, you know, winning, winning's not enough. You have to have something more. Because every manager, every football team, every club, they want to go out and win every game. So what's that extra thing you've got? And he says it's about, it's about the way you play. It's, it's about building a, a kind of football, a style of football that entertains the fans, and when you do that, winning is kind of a byproduct. Success is a byproduct of that. And that rang a big, huge, Danny Fla Blanche flower shaped bell in my head. It is the greatest of fallacies that the, uh, the football, that the be all and end all of football is winning and uh, is about winning. It's nothing of the sort. The game is about glory. It's about doing things with style and a flourish. It's about going out and beating the other lot and not waiting for them to die of boredom. Now, I don't know if Ange has read up on Danny Blanche Flower or Bill Nick 
I've heard him say these things before, by the way. You know, he said them kind of all through his career. So it's not just the case that he's, he's, he's swatting up on Danny Blanchflower and Bill Nick. This is what Ange believes. Maybe it's due to his Tottenham Hotspur football heritage. Remember, Peter McWilliam came down from Inverness, started the uh, progressive football uh, roll, ball rolling at Tottenham Hotspur in the 1920s. Peter McWilliam had two stints at Tottenham Hotspur as manager, pre-war and post-war. Pre-war, post-war, two of the players he got in were Vic Buckingham and uh, Bill Nicholson. We all know Bill Nicholson. Vic Buckingham uh, went on to manage Ajax and Barcelona. He was the guy that brought to it total football to Ajax and Barcelona. He was the guy that coached Johan Cruyff. So Johan Cruyff was Vic Buckingham's protege. So no Tottenham Hotspur, no uh, Vic Buckingham, no Johan Cruyff, no Pep Guardiola. But pre-war, Peter McWilliam uh, got in Arthur Rowe as a player. They obviously had a bit of, uh, I, think, I think the modern word for it is synergy. <laughs> God, they don't have to make up words these days, don't they? Um, but Arthur Rowe, just before the uh, Second World War, was hired by the Hungarian government. To get, their, um, to get their football association up and going. So he coached Ferenc Pushkas. And then in, oh, if you don't know about Ferenc Pushkas, go to the Hungarian team, Real Madrid. After the, uh, the, uprise, the failed uprising in Hungary, um, uh, Pushkas moved around the place in Spain, ended up in Melbourne and coached uh, a young Ange Postacoglu in the late, uh, late 80s, 89. So, whether he knew it or not, Tottenham has got a, is part of the uh, Tottenham family tree in a roundabout way. Jim White asked him about, you know, what's the ceiling for this team? I don't believe in ceilings, mate. I don't believe in ceilings, floors, walls. He said, uh, you know, he's had to, he's had put ceilings put up in front of him and he's had to crash through them a couple of times. So that's what he wants to do with Tottenham, crash through any ceilings. And this is, this is just music to our ears, isn't it? It's uh, <clears throat> shades of Bill Nicholson. It's better to fail aiming high than succeed aiming low. So that even in, even in, uh, even in failure, there, there is within it an echo of victory, uh, an echo of glory rather. So, we've now currently got a manager, as I've been saying a while, but <clears throat> I mean, he's making it more and more obvious to not only me, but everyone else, that uh, has the Tottenham way in his heart. You know, he might have got there by a different route, uh, but he believes the same things that Spurs fans and players and managers have believed for, you know, a hundred years, hundred years. Uh, and it's wonderful to see. Um, Ange was asked about, you know, Daniel Levy and club not winning anything for a long time, you know, and why did you take the job? He said, well, that's the challenge, isn't it? It's a big club that hasn't had. And he's very, he's very clear about it, but not being, you know, not being a snide about it. Not being a snide about it. Whereas, you know, Conte and Mourinho are more, were more um, this club hasn't won anything, I'm a winner. You know, and it's going to take ages and the fans have got to be patient and say, I'm not going to tell what the fans should think or feel. And the reason he took the job was one he was asked. And two, it's a big challenge. It is a big club and it's, we haven't won anything for ages. So to bring that back, to bring that back, to put Tottenham Hotspur back up where it belongs, that's what Ange wants to do. He wants to create a lasting legacy, not only for himself, but the club and the supporters and it's uh you know it's a it's a wonderful thing to hear now steve perriman who i enjoy his podcast and really if you're a if you're a tottenham fan you could do a lot worse than uh going and subscribing to his channel uh, you know tottenham hotspur's record appearance appearance getter i think it's 866 appearances uh, our most decorated player, six six major trophies. So uh, you know, when Steve talks, it's it's worth listening to. 
And um, last season, just as most Spurs fans were, you could see Steve was, you know, getting disheartened by how things were going at Tottenham. The way it was being run, the way it was being managed, the culture, the players' committee. It just like a lot of it was getting him down. He was kind of floating in and out of interest of watching games. And uh, it was really it was sad to see, you know, because he, he, to me, is Mr. Tottenham. Um, but he feels what we feel. So it was kind of reassuring as well. It's not a happy clapper, not like me. <laughs> and um, his podcast yesterday, it was just so nice to see him happy. He looks really happy. And he's saying what we're all, ha what we're all saying. This international break is a pain. I'm missing the football, man. I'm missing watching Tottenham. Now, last year, international breaks were a welcome respite from, you know, turgid boredom and making your eyes bleed. Um, and uh, Steve, Steve looks so far impressed with Ange. He likes the fact that Ange keeps his words simple, which I think is really important, really important, not only for us, so it's nice and clear, but for the players, you know, nice clear concise instructions and um, Steve Perriman's often talked about Bill Nicholson the simple phrases he used to just say to players you know when I, 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 I it makes me think when you know there's a few videos that are trying to analyze Ange Ball and I think really I, I don't know how much of it is a plan tactic I think it's more of a set of principles um, so maybe you have to have more of a structure until players just naturally uh, you know, bring that into themselves and then they can have, uh, you know, express more freedom around it. So like one Bill Nicholson's phrase, I think uh, one was, uh, when the ball goes dead, we come alive. Incidentally, I watched a 1972 match, Manchester United versus Tottenham that we won 4-1. I just felt like watching an old game from an era that I'm not overly familiar with. And you could see it exactly in action. Two times in that game in the first half, Man, Man United went to sleep. They thought the ball was either dead or the referee had stopped, was going to stop play, whereas Tottenham kept on going. And that was a, that was a 4 1 win. Martin Peters uh, got four goals in that one. And um, it was actually fun seeing a, a young Steve Perryman in midfield. And he really kind of struck me oddly as, as like a player, like a bit of a Pepe Matassar, in that it was, it was like. Steve and and uh, and the ball would intersect paths, and then the ball would just touch his feet and come off at any angle he chose, any of any 360 degrees around him, straight to another play. So it's just run, tap, run, tap, and it was really crisp and fluid, and I really enjoyed watching it actually. And if you want to, uh, if you want to get an idea of what a wing back or a progressive uh, fullback looks like, look no further than Cyril Knowles, man. He was so up, far up the pitch. It was brilliant. Um, but anyway, so so Steve um, Steve caught on to, uh, you know, he's obviously been doing his homework on Ange, and he's seen the uh, training video uh, mic'd up at Celtic, where Ange is shouting at the players, we never stop. We never stop. If the other, one, if the other team wants to stop, that's fine. They'll be delighted if we stop. But the only time we're going to stop is at half time and at full time. Rest of the 90 minutes, we never stop. Simple. Simple. So rather than double eight pivots and tram lines and stuff like that, it's these basic sayings. And I think that that's what really brings footballers alive. You can see the way we're playing, you know, they're if someone's running into space they've always got support they're playing for each other you can't do that unless you've got each other's back you know you can't have freedom and go for a little jolly uh, around the pitch if you think that if there's a chance of you losing the ball that uh, it's going to go into the possession of the other team you've got to back each other up when you're being adventurous and you've got to take risks um, so Ange and, and his two other presenters Tom and Howard are uh, happy, happy. And it, it was, it was nice. It's, you know, I'm really enjoying this seeing Tottenham fans happy, smiling, uh, instead of uh, enduring what we've had to endure. 
and who knows what's going to happen you know it's going to go up be ups and downs it's not going to be all plain sailing but we can see what we're trying to do we can see what Ange and the team are trying to do um so steve perriman podcast you know that's it, it I, I, he doesn't. He doesn't do. Uh, it's kind of irregular, but uh, whenever one drops, uh, oh, I always listen to. It. I listened to to yesterday's podcast a couple of times. So it's good times for Tottenham, man. It's good times for Tottenham. Now, as you can see, I'm out and about, which means I'm back on the road. I'm back working, which means I'm probably not going to be on other streams as much because um, I just uh, basically for the next few weeks. I'm going to be work, sleep, work, sleep, just to get my head above water again, uh, which is fine. It's all doable, uh, but it means that I'll be able to do videos like this, and when, uh, um, I'll be streaming at strange hours, unpredictable hours. So uh, if you do want to know when I'm streaming, I don't give any warning, uh, and everyone's more than welcome. I enjoy chatting to you all there, uh, and um, you know if you want to know when that happens, best to hit the subscribe button. And that bell icon and uh, you'll get to know when I pop up from time to time because like if I think oh I'll stream tomorrow morning and I'll schedule it I might get the top get up tomorrow morning and think oh, I don't want to do it now so I'm very I'm very spur of the moment there's no watch on these wrists buster so uh, you know let me let me know in the comments below I don't you know I don't reply to comments because uh, I just don't but I do read them so I'd be interested to know what you uh, you folks thought of um, uh, Ange Postacoglu's press conference. You know, it, when, when he came out with that quote that sounded like Bill, of a Bill Nicholson, it, it just reminded me of a, a frequent um, viewer of, of, of the channel and my, my streams, a member of the Hotspur Hippie Commune. Super chats and comments and memberships are available if you want to uh, help me out, keep doing this. Because uh, he's bet, he, he's uh, Chem 62. He's he's met he's met Bill Nicholson, and he said that there's you know. Can't remember what he said. I'll put it in my own words. I'll say that uh, Ange Postacoglu is from the same neighbourhood as Bill Bill Nicholson, if you know what I mean. So we've only got a few days now left before Sheffield United. I'm I'm pumped. I'm buzzing. I can't wait for it. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know if Sun's injured or not. It looks like our players have had a fantastic international break, apart from James Madison, who has played out of position. But Hyungmin Son, uh, Kulisevsky, Hoiberg, all, all done well. Obviously, Richie's still struggling, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens there, eh? So I hope you're all well. I'm just going to enjoy the sun before uh, the old lunchtime rush starts. I can get motoring. Uh, thanks to everyone early on in the channel days uh, that supported me with uh, the odd uh, buck here and there, donations on a GoFundMe, really kept my head above water for the last three months, but I'm back and I'm rearing to go. So until next time, peace and love man, Cohen New Spurs.